this video is going to show footage released by Washington DC Metropolitan Police Department showing what happened in the shooting and killing of 18 year old Dion K. We're also going to update you on the case of Daniel Prude who died on March 30th in Rochester, New York. The video took five months to surface and now seven officers have been suspended by the Rochester Police Department and that city's mayor. You're going to hear the statement made by the mayor. But first, Dion K. So, the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department statement released at the time was at approximately 3.51 p.m., uniform patrol officers of the 7th District responded to the listed location to investigate a man with a gun. Upon arrival, officers encountered individuals in and around the vehicle. Upon seeing the officers, two of the suspects fled on foot. During the foot pursuit, one of the suspects brandished the firearm. In response, an officer discharged their firearm one time, striking the suspect. DC Fire and Emergency Medical Services responded to the scene, transported the suspect to an area hospital for treatment of life-threatening injuries. After all life-saving efforts failed, the suspect was pronounced dead. The other suspect made good their escape and was not appre apprehended. The deceased has been identified as 18-year-old Dion K of Southeast DC. The deceased handgun was recovered and is pictured below. So you see the photo of there right there on the grass. Additionally, a 19-year-old Marcel Smith of Southeast DC was found to be in possession of a handgun. He was arrested and charged for carrying a pistol without a license. An 18-year-old Deontay Brown of Southeast DC was also arrested and charged with no permit. I assume that means the driver's permit. The handgun recovered from 19-year-old Marcel Smith can be seen in the photo below. The officers involved have been placed on administrative leave pursuant to the police department policy. Responding officers activated their body-worn cameras. That footage is currently under review. This case remains under investigation. Anyone with information is asked to call the police department. Now, the video was released. The policy of the police department in D.C. is to release all body cam video footage within five days of the incident. And they did that. Now we're going to take a look at what the video showed. This is the community briefing involving the fatal shooting of Mr. Dion K involving a uniformed police officer on Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020 in the 200 block of Orange Street Southeast. All viewers should be aware that this contains graphic content of a fatal shooting. The Metropolitan Police Department's model use of force policy and training emphasize de-escalation, proportionality, and reasonableness. Above all, MPD recognizes the sanctity of human life and that any loss of life is a tragic outcome for a family and a community. Since December 2016, all patrol officers are required to wear body-worn cameras. On Wednesday, September 2, 2020, at approximately 3.49 p.m., uniformed MPD officers were in the area of the 200 block of Orange Street Southeast to investigate a man with a gun. Upon arrival, the officers approached individuals in a parked vehicle. Mr. Dion K. exited the vehicle and began to run on foot. Officers pursued Mr. K. on foot. An officer observed Mr. K. brandish a firearm, and subsequently the officer discharged his service weapon once, striking Mr. K. in the chest.
Hey, shot, shot's fire, shot's fire. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. I'm looking for the gun. He's up there. I did. Where? Yeah, where's the Hey. Me canvas. Where? Where? Down this way? He threw it. Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Is there anybody else standing? Uh, one. This way. But I, I gotta find it. He's got a he's got a do rag on his head. Black male, do rag on his head, 5'4, 100 pounds, wearing a black shirt. I got it right here. Do we think he has a gun? I don't know. This is the one that he was holding. You good? I'm good. I'm involved. I'm the only one involved. I think. Just have to be advised, in reference to those uh, South Carolina, we have an individual still outstanding. He's going to be a black male, about 5'4", wearing a black t-shirt. Last seen running towards 2900 block of 2nd Street. Hey, firm, we're gonna have a weapon recovery, but it could. But it's a possibility that he might be armed as well. Are you good? I'm good, bro. Yeah. We got to secure this too. Can we have a union rep response to the scene? So you know what I'm guessing? Yeah, I'm not, you don't no, say anything I'm good, to anyone. I'm done, man. I'm good. We just have, we gotta make sure this is. Clear. I got you. Right. You may have to take a seat. Right. I got it. Take a seat. Sit, sit right there. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm right here. I'm good. Until this is over, I'm good. It's gonna be two weapon recoveries. He's got one too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Hey, firm. Is he a juvenile? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he is. I don't know if he. I mean, I think he, he was like a year ago. I think. He ran. He ran down. He 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 cut the corner. I mean, at at this point, yeah. we, we got to do what we got yeah, right now. I know. I know.
I'm gonna put the lookout out. I just I hit my radio, my my button. Don't worry about it. What, what do you need? Hey, direct to Falcon. The lookout for the one outstanding. It's going to be a black male. It's approximately 5'3 to 5'5. Five five. He's thin built. Yeah. He had a, uh, um, uh, a wrap over his head. And uh, he was last seen running from 200 Orange over to, uh, what's that, 2nd Street? Uh, 2900 block of 2nd Street towards uh, Malcolm X. No, this is from, this is from the one involved. Oh. Is he in bad shape? Huh? Is he in bad shape? Don't worry about it right now. Just go, go sit down. I, mean, I got it, I got it. Don't worry about it. One other thing about this case, after the video footage from the police was shown, uh, somebody collected all the tributes to Dion K from his friends, posted on Instagram, and the tributes that they posted include the images that you're about to see. I stayed up the longest when my nigga died. I pulled up the most so I could stop from crying. Relapse after quitting like my second time. But I know I just wanted them to pain. Oh, I could haul out for my niggas, huh? You know you'll get shot for my niggas. It's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building. You know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped to protect yourself. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? Because you're living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear, mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? On March 23rd, 2020, Joe Prude of Rochester called the police because his brother Daniel, who was visiting, was having mental health issues and he left the house. Police found him naked, walking in the cold streets. The temperature that night was around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Within 15 minutes, 
Daniel was being put in an ambulance, having lost consciousness, without having resisted arrest. Daniel Prude died in the hospital from his injuries on March 30th. Nothing happened during the month of April, May, June, and July. It wasn't until August 4th that Rochester Mayor Lovely Warren finally got to see the body cam footage. In September, Prude's family demanded to see the video filing a Freedom of Information Act request. Once they obtained the video, they released it to the media. On September 2nd, the mayor and the police chief made the following statements. In this particular instance, this is not within our control. And it's not within our control fairly because the executive order outlines that this case has to be handled by the Attorney General's office. I want the Prude family, I know that they're frustrated right now, but rest assured that we are going to do everything possible to make sure that the truth comes out and that justice is held here. Well, we did take this investigation seriously from day one. That morning, I ordered an uh, internal investigation and a criminal investigation as well, and I have been in constant contact with um, the AG's office regarding this investigation. After the release of the video to the media and the case getting national attention, the mayor made this announcement on the following day. Mr. Daniel Prude was failed by our police department, our mental health care system, our society, and he was failed by me. And I stand here against the advice of our corporation counsel, but I would not be who I am today had I not, if I don't stand on my own truth. I must apologize to the Proof family and to all of our community. I have never shied away from taking action in holding our police or anyone that fails in their duties in our community accountable. That is why I am suspending the officers in question today against the advice of counsel. And I urge the Attorney General to complete her investigation. Experiencing and ultimately dying from a drug overdose in police custody, as I was told by the chief, is entirely different than what I ultimately witnessed on the video provided to me by the law department on August 4th. At no time prior to August 4th did Chief Singletary or anyone make me aware or show me a video of the actions of the RPD officers involved in Mr. Prue's death. What I saw in that video was a man who needed help, a man who needed compassion, a man who needed humanity, a man who we should have respected, a man who was in crisis. Our response to him was wrong. And we need to change how we deal with these situations going forward. 